Hello everyone, today we will show you what happened to the pregnant female praying mantis and the female nymph. For those who are unaware, we filmed a video in which we placed four praying mantises in our mega terrarium. Two were males and two were females. One female was already sexually mature while the other was still a nymph. The same was true for the males. There were all four possible combinations of mantises by gender and imago nymph division. Then during mating, the female mantis imago ate the male imago, but the male was no fool. While the female worked with her mandibles in front, he worked behind. He left behind a reproductive semen in the belly of his disposable bride, or perhaps he was the disposable groom, depending on how you look at it. The male praying mantis nymph was apparently struck down by an infection and remained in the terrarium forever. The female nymph turned into an imago right before our eyes after molting. That concludes the summary of the previous video. Now let's talk about what happened to the surviving mantises, the pregnant female and the female nymph. Both mantises remained in the terrarium and coexisted peacefully. Thanks to the size of the terrarium, they rarely crossed paths. Almost. There were moments when the mantises were close to each other and could see each other. However, neither attacked nor hunted the other. Apparently, they understood that a fight would end badly for both of them. Why engage in battle with an equal opponent when you can find a weaker one? Here is the pregnant female a week later. Her belly has become significantly rounder, especially compared to the nymph stage and to how it was before she made it. The time between conception and egg laying in mantises is not exact. This period can range from a few days to several weeks. We think her belly is big enough to start laying eggs. Two weeks later, tragedy struck. This occurred even before we started the aquarium. In the morning I found that the mantis had drowned. I was so upset and sad. It turned out to be the female who had recently been a nymph. To prevent the pregnant female from meeting the same fate, we drained the aquarium. Three weeks later, nothing has changed. The female has not given birth. She just keeps getting bigger and bigger. She's already shaped like a barrel. The birth should happen any minute, yet it still hasn't. See for yourself how her belly is pulsating. I think it's difficult for her to carry so many eggs, as well as the protein mass that will protect them. It's so difficult that she mostly hangs upside down, and moving is very hard for her. Her belly pulls her down. Once again, you can appreciate the size of her belly against her slender body. Three weeks is a long time to carry, so the birth can't be far off. She has already stopped trying to change her position and has resigned herself to the fact that hanging upside down is her only option. The next morning, without changing her location or position, the female mantis gave birth. More accurately, she laid her othica. This is a special protein capsule that she creates from foam secreted from her gonads. After secretion, the othica quickly hardens, protecting the eggs from predators and bad weather. Currently, while the capsule has not hardened yet, we can observe the female laying eggs. Furthermore, the female did not leave the Uthaka for about 12 hours. Considering the duration of the process and the gestation period, I'm afraid to even imagine how many eggs she laid. As you can see, the outside of the Uthaka has already darkened and the female is still working. Incidentally, this species of mantis lays between 100 and 200 eggs per cocoon. For those who don't know, this is the European mantis, Mantis religiosa. Finally, the egg laying process is over and it's time to clean up. It looks almost like sewing up an umbilical cord. Praying mantises, at least the females, can be very flexible. 
The important thing is to avoid getting confused and eating anything extra. Now our girl is no longer restricted in her movements and can walk freely again. A couple of days have passed since the female laid her eggs and she seems to be doing quite well. She looks healthy and her belly is smaller, making it easier for her to move around instead of just hanging upside down. Incubation takes four to six weeks under favorable conditions. Our terrarium provides just such conditions in terms of humidity and temperature. Cannibalism is normal for mantises, and the mother may eat her babies, so we decided to separate her. To this end, we prepared a new terrarium with a sandy bottom and a small landscape. Inside, we placed a water dispenser and put cotton pads in it. We filled it with water so that the mantis will not drown. We also added a few twigs for decoration and practicality. The mantis can climb on them. Overall, the house is not bad. Of course, it's not a giant terrarium, but it's better than living outside in the winter. We offered the female a stick, or rather a twig, and she moved over without hesitation. Once again, we can see how much smaller her belly has become since giving birth. In fact, it appears to be smaller than it was in the hours immediately following the laying of the Uthaka. She is in her new home, and as usual is resting upside down. For those unfamiliar with mantises, this is their most comfortable resting position. All it needs to do is cling to any surface with the spikes on its legs. It doesn't need to balance or find its center of gravity. In essence, it's the same position as a person lying down. She is resting and looking at us, whispering something. Click the subscribe and like buttons, please. The best way to cope with the stress of moving is to enjoy a snack. Let's give her that pleasure. She grabbed the cockroach right away and started eating it. No matter how much you feed a mantis, it always seems hungry. They don't eat when they want to, but rather when the opportunity arises, which may not be often in the wild. Look how clean she is. She ate and washed herself. Each of her legs spikes needs to be cleaned. Her legs are used as predatory weapons, so food debris and fat must be removed from them for future attacks to maintain their sharpness and grip. It's all in the name of maintaining hunting efficiency. Apparently, after a snack, she wanted a drink. It's no wonder they put a water bowl there to let her quench her thirst. transplanted, fed, and watered. You can cover the mini terrarium with a ventilated lid. The new apartment is ready. What else is surprising? Near the place where the fog comes out, on a rock, we found another, smaller Uthika. It's unclear when it was laid, and by whom. Even a nymph could have done it after becoming an imago. Pregnancy isn't a prerequisite for laying a capsule. Perhaps this is another clutch from a pregnant female. Determining the age of the clutch is very difficult. In fact, its color matches that of the Uthika we tracked. It's just smaller and has a different shape. Four days later, another capsule appeared on a twig in the mini terrarium. I read that a female praying mantis can lay up to 10 cocoons during her lifetime, even if she has only been fertilized once. She can store the male sperm, allowing her to create new clutches as the eggs mature. Our terrarium is also a scientific project to some extent, so now we can track how the weather and incubation period affect the number of mantises born. Two cocoons found themselves in favorable conditions with high humidity and warmth immediately. We will place this cocoon in a cup and send it to hibernate in the cold until spring as is customary in temperate climates. We will cover it with a ventilated lid to prevent disturbance during hibernation. 
We will return to the topic of mantises as soon as something interesting happens. That's all for now. Bye-bye.